And I know that not everybody's going to like me. And I know that sometimes people have bad days and they take it out on the people that they love the most. You you know that too. But, yep. but they still hurt and it still takes parts of your heart away. And it doesn't matter how much you tell yourself it's not going to. So what what is a good answer for that? How do we keep from from allowing others to own a part of us that they have no right to own? That's such a great point. I do. I know with um, Operation Respect Connecticut and uh, the Don't Laugh at Me program, we teach the children that words do hurt, and that's you know it's a kind of an old nursery rhyme, and yet we've learned that words do hurt. So it doesn't you know sticks and stones will break my bones. Words will hurt me too. And so that kids understand that because if you were brought up with that saying, you'd think, so what if I told little Johnny he's a fat kid? You know, that doesn't, it's just words, not going to hurt him. I could be like hitting him with sticks and stones, but I'm not, mom. I'm being a good girl, just saying he's a fatty fat. Like, that's not, that, those are really still hurtful words. And so as we teach the children, we have to get rid of that quote. We just really have to like stop saying it and, and, and not let a child or use it as, as an example or use the broken heart. Um, I think that's why empathy is so important because you have to make sure that you you put yourself in that other shoes to see what it, what it feels like. And in the past, I mean, we've all made mistakes and we're human. Um, and so uh, a heartfelt and a sincere apology when you really said something you didn't mean will go a long way. And in all honesty, I use those words heartfelt and sincere because often someone will say something and then it's really, you know, oh, did that hurt you? Oh, oh, sorry it hurt you. Right. Like that, but that didn't really, that's not, that's not really an apology. No. You know? Right. So, and I've seen a lot of those kind of apologies. It's so tough because we're, we're I, okay, here's how I think about it. We are a world that everyone has different thoughts. Unfortunately, right now in 2017, there's a lot with the election, a lot going on that's it's bringing things to the forefront. And then we have social media that's taking another step, and you can hide behind a fake account. You can hide behind your own account. This weekend, I read some really nasty comments, mm-hmm. and then I went on the profile to see these people hold pretty darn good jobs, and, you know, they're not hiding who they are. So I guess they think it's acceptable to, to be nasty online. But this is where, Deb, we can make the decision – to be with those that have the same character and have the same um, emotions that we have and, and the same feelings. And so we're watching people align themselves. So if you are someone who's not very nice or if you're racist or whatever it may be, you're going to align yourself with all those people, right? right. You and I, we're, we're lining ourselves up with the women that are really making a difference in the world and changing the world and helping. And I actually have to say that I think, I want to talk to you about this. I think you're being a coach. is such a beautiful thing. And I love the fact that there's more coaches in the world because you are actually here to help other women. And I've never really had a coach, but in my life now I understand the reason. I think that that we need someone else to kind of help us go through all this crap and kind of like try to figure it all out so that we can remain true to ourselves and not end up going down the wrong um, set of stairs. Exactly. It'll lead us to a dark and gloomy room. You know, and one of the things that I, as a coach, there's no model of how to be. There's, there's nothing out there that says, when someone says this, do this. When someone says this, react this way. There's only that moment that you have to react however you're going to react. And unless you know who you are and what you believe, which is part of the devolution's whole format, is you're not going to be able to react authentically. And you're not going to be able to say the thing that you really mean because it just won't come. So, like, I'm t- I'm right now I'm coaching a woman that's in her 70s. And she's having... Some issues with the way the, the younger women are treating her in a large organization. They're not. Get, she founded these different ideas and and planted these different seeds for programs, and she's not getting the credit. And that's tough, you know. That's sad. I, you know, I just had an idea in my head. I actually wonder what it would be like if we did. Uh, 
a ch- and not we because I'm not a coach, but if there was a chain of coaching and that if a coach could take someone younger in, and, and let me explain my reason because, and I don't like to pinhole and say millennials, but uh, but I will tell you that it does seem like there is a certain age group of young men and young women that do not have the respect mm-hmm. for their elders like our generation. I'm a baby boomer, and we grew up with a lot of mm-hmm. respect for our elders. I mean, I would never – I still have a hard time calling someone uh, their first name. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I was growing up, you say Mr. or Mrs. I mean, That's you right. are – you respect them. And I noticed this about – at work probably about – 10, 10 years ago, some of the younger employees came in and they were like picking fights with some of the staff that had been there for a long time. And I couldn't understand it because I was like, I would never, ever, I mean, someone with experience, someone older, you would respect them. But yet, do you agree or disagree? Because I'm, oh, yeah. I'm actually saying there's a lot of, I'm not saying everyone, I'm not, I'm not trying to group everyone, but for some reason, there is the younger generation that does not have the respect of the their elders it's am it's, i in that case or is this what no is this really i think real? you're very right you know i network a lot and in my networking mm-hmm. i run across a lot of younger people that are the ages of my children you know and my children are very respectful and i i think the way that I was raised for that. And I'm sure your children are very respectful too. Mm-hmm. So they're not, everybody is like that, but there are those that think they know so much more that they don't give us the, even the, the um, auditory respect that we deserve. And, and then I've even seen this happen where they'll take, people's ideas and present them as their own when they weren't. True. Mm-hmm. I love your auditory too. That's so true. So what do you think? What if, what if, what if a creation was a, ch- a, the, a, a chain of coaching where coaches would give even just a half an hour, an hour to explain the reasons why it is so important to remember the history and what this person has gone through in the years that they have, have worked. And, and just because, I mean, I've heard like, you know, disrespect because, Oh, they're not even on Facebook. They're old. Right. No, that's, that's so you what? Know, I know. I, but I'm just thinking this could right. actually be a great thing to do because we oh. talk all the time. We need to mentor the next generation. And I think that would be a huge point is to get them to understand. We need more events, too, where we're bringing in both generations. Yes, I agree with that. Those in their 20s to those in their, really, I guess anything over 50 would be considered old, too, to those uh, whippersnappers. (laughs) And you know what? Isn't that funny? That whippersnappers is a young word that was used often, right? Like, oh, they're just a young whippersnapper. Yeah. Do you know what whippersnapper means? Um. It's it's isn't it like the end of a whip that snaps? I don't really know. <laughs> I think it. Means, I really don't know where so the that means from. that they. I think it means I take it like that person has a comeback for everything, even though they don't know what they're talking about. That's. Oh, so oh, that's really interesting. So then that would mean disrespect. Right. Right. Oh wait, so oh. you're so right. Okay, let me because because dictionary is right here. A young and ex, an inexperienced person considered to be presumptuous or overconfident. Uh huh. Uh, that is interesting. I haven't heard that term actually in in a, in a while. But it always was one <laughs> of the terms good that one. always stuck with me. Yeah, right. I remember like my grandpa to... told me one time I was being a whippersnapper. <laughs> I was probably about I thirteen. Was, that's a great term. I always <laughs> want to go around calling everyone today. But no, it's a bad term. It's not Don't a nice be a term. whippersnapper. But I would like to say that I, I, you know, I do see this in the place of work and the lack of uh, the lack of respect, and it's and it's hard to earn that respect from someone that's younger because they're not even giving you the opportunity to sit down with them and explain. So maybe, maybe businesses should encourage, uh, again, more multicultural lunches. You know, I, I always say you have to, you know, once you get to know someone, you don't, you, you don't think 
badly of them. So I think back on, you know, when you have children and, you know, oh, I don't like so-and-so. And one day I, my, my daughter had come home and she was like telling me all the reasons why she didn't like this young girl. And so I called the mother up and I'm like, can I ask you a couple questions? Like what kind of ice cream, what kind of dolls does your daughter play with? What TV shows? And I gathered enough intel and I turned to my daughter and I was like, hey, you like mint chocolate chip ice cream? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, little Lula does too. Really? And do you watch, you know, whatever the show is on, on whatever, Nickelodeon? And all of a sudden, Alana's eyes were like, wait a second, she likes everything. I said, well, let's discuss it at the bus stop. And they became friends right after that. That's all that was needed was a connection between the two of them. And you know what? Isn't that true with everybody to find that common ground? You know, I was in sales for many years. I was a realtor. And that was one of our first roles in getting to know somebody was to break the ice and find common ground. No matter what the age. So yeah. we really, Deb, I think that you and I should really try to take on this, this challenge. I think it's a good idea. I do too. I, and I think that coaching... So tell me a little bit more coaching. Like I, I only I sat in with a lovely girl Kelly in Tucson, and she did one of the uh, coaching um, uh, program on your goals, and I actually really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I had a great time. I did go in with like I'm not sure if I'm going to love it. Um, and usually when I go into something that I'm not sure I'm going to love, I end up like really loving it. <laughs> like you ever have that when you yes. those, those, uh, the events you don't want to go to are the ones that you look back <laughs> and you're like I'm so grateful that I pushed myself uh-huh. to go. Yes. So. The woman that you coach, what 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 are their what are they looking for? Well, I'm I'm a little bit different than most coaches because I my focus isn't primarily on career or um, or relationships or I, I coach everybody. So when you come to me, I ask you a whole bunch of questions and then I find where your need is, and then we go on from there. So I. Virtually, not virtually, I really do write a coaching program for everybody that I coach. It's all different. So it's different than counseling because it's coaching more for career or for growth, inner growth, personal growth? It's If you come to me and you need help with career, finding career, then that's what we'll focus on. If it's about... Um, if it's that you need help with relationships or possibly getting over a divorce, that's where we'll focus on. But I'll tell you one thing that always is they have in common is the um, fact that I have to coach from within to bring the confidence out in order for you to move on to the next step. And that's basically what my coaching approach is. It enables you to move on to the next step. Oh, I love it. So instead of saying, so what was there before coaching? Would it be like a like a counselor or someone you would go to, um, like a social worker? What were people do? like? How long has coaching been in existence? I I when I first got my first very first certification, there weren't very many coaches, and that was uh, let me think eight years ago. And at that point, there were only a couple different schools offering coaching certifications. And so f- since then, I've gotten a whole bunch more because, you know, it, you just like to keep learning. And now there's tons of coaches, and a lot of them have found a niche where where they that's where their expertise is. Like, um, like you said, career, uh, whatever, career, what else? Goal setting. Goal um, setting, right, right. Like, and I kind of incorporate all of those. Like I'm, I'm certified in nutritional consultant. I'm certified in divorce. Um, I'm certified in a bunch. My brain is kind of full of snot right now, so I can't think real well. But um, you do Reiki too. Is that yes. are you a Reiki coach? Yes. Yes. Wow! I was just listening that you did eight eight Reiki sessions in one day. Yes. <laughs> yes, and I was fine that day, but the next day I was like drained. I couldn't even hardly move or talk. It was really funny. But my mom was always so progressive. So I remember like 15 years ago, she was so progressive, so smart, and always wanting to bring different experiences into the office. 
maybe it was 20 years ago. I think it was about 20, maybe 20, 25 years ago that my mom would bring in, you know, like a Reiki person to come in and she would allow you to leave your office and go in and, and have.